Uh, so, Lee, tell us all about uh, Visor. Visor. Thank Visor. you, Jesse. Visor. All right. Um, have you ever found yourself wanting to write code like this? This is uh, an algorithm for balancing some binary trees. But every single time you tried to write the code, it always came out something like this. Yes, I hate that so much. <laughs> so, maybe, after reading some, you know, obscure book that very few people have heard of, you realize that the essence of writing a computer program is communicating ideas not just to machines, but also to other people who may or may not be yourself ten years down the road. So maybe you're sitting there all smug thinking, oh, I wrote something like this, right? Where, you know, you, you, you put the tree in the comments, and it, it looks nice, and then, uh, unfortunately, you still have your code down here. It's, <laughs> it's nice, but you find yourself, maybe you need to update the code, and you forget to update the comments, and everything just... It's not, not nice. What we want is language-oriented programming. We're all at RacketCon. We want to actually have our comment, like have the tree be the language, not just some comments around the language. Also, the Racket way, we want to be able to do this from within the same programming language that we're using to, to use these DSLs. Unfortunately, try as you might, you're going to have a hard time creating a, an actual piece of runnable trees in text. Uh, at least generically, you can create specific ASCII art diagrams. But what you really want is some kind of pictures. So maybe you think, okay, I'm going to go use a piece of software called Scratch or a similar visual programming environment, and it's all great. Until your code ends up looking like this. <laughs> this is from a website called Blueprints from Hell. It takes the, um, I believe this is Unreal Blueprints. It, it's either Unreal or Unity Blueprints um, from actual projects. And, and, and don't get me wrong. This isn't to say visual programming is bad. It's, you could do just as bad the stuff with text, as we all know. But it's not a, a catch-all solution. So if you really want to explain your ideas fully, you, you need more than just visuals. You, you also need some text. So here's a text editor. Uh, it's kind of rare. Some of you may have heard of it. <laughs> Dr. Racket. It actually has these things called snips that you can embed right in your code. That's great. So I go take this editor, or, or take this program, and I open it in Emacs. I get this. A nice message saying, don't do this. <laughs> and then, oh, I, I can't understand what any of this says. And oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> okay. So, no, and what's, what's really funny is, this is only the first, like, third of this image file. I tried putting the rest of it in, but it made the whole slideshow just freeze up. <laughs> so we need something, ideally, that we can edit in not just one IDE. What we really want is a hybrid visual textual programming language. One that we can program in other IDEs, it, you know, any IDE you would want, uh, including ones that don't support visualization. So just vanilla Vim or Emacs, even. As well as, you know, nice IDEs like this, this weird Dr. Racket. We want to mix text with visuals. Now, or, 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 you know, we want ultimately to have our tree balancing code be something like this. Now, 
Okay, nope. Finally, again, we want to do this in the same language. Uh, 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 we want to have a programming language that allows us to write these domain-specific extensions. We don't want to have to have separate IDE plugins or language plugins, right? We all we want macros. Unfortunately, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's not going to be any, or very, there will be very little racket in the, the rest of this talk. <laughs> uh, I apologize, but before you start throwing all those excess bananas at me, <laughs> I'm going to try to distract you with a fun example. Okay? So this here is an IDE called LIDE. That's E L I D E. This is an IDE that runs both on the web as well as in desktop browsers, or, or sorry, in desktop applications. And, you know, this is a full-featured IDE. It has all the things you would want, like autocomplete, um, files, a run button. I don't know. What else do you want from an IDE? <laughs> <laughs> but what's cool here is this is actual runnable code. So if I were to hit run here, uh, it will error. The programs look the same way, at least. <laughs> it's definitely a real program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Story of my life. Okay, well, that's very odd that that's not working. Uh, but this is piece, uh, an actual piece of syntax. Like, you can click on this and increase it. And you can even do things like copy and paste. Uh, and you can even do things like open it and view the text. And you can even, let's say you want to copy it outside, you know, this whole thing. I want to copy it, and I want to open it up in Vim, and you can open it up in Vim, and you can copy it from Vim, and paste it back. There's one more break that you need to ah, copy. Thank you. Okay, cool. And Apparently that works now. Okay, <laughs> so this is this is a, a very clearly an actual thing that is running, um, not at all prepared. How does this work? Well, there's two components here. The first part is a lide, the IDE I showed you. But more interestingly is Visor. That's uh, the Visual and Interactive Syntax Realized. In this case, for Closure Script and the DOM. Why did I pick the DOM? So we want something that can mix textual and non-textual elements together. Ideally, you know, something that developers may have heard about, something that can run lots of different languages. Anyone's computer can run, run the DOM. So, we also want something that allows for metaprogramming facilities. Something with some sandboxing capabilities. Basically, this is the, you know, perfect fit. You know, hypertext has been around for decades. It's just not really been used for programming, at least not like this. We picked Closure Script to build this in because it has metaprogramming facilities more than JavaScript does. Nowhere near as you know comprehensive as Racket, but it's a start. And what you do to create a new extension like this is you say def visitor, okay? 
Who here has written macros? Okay, good. So if you've written a macro or, or had experience using macros, hopefully this is going to seem a little familiar. By the way, if any of you have any questions, feel free to just shout it out. I'm not going to be able to see your hands, but I would be happy to answer them. The first part of your death visor form is going to be your state. Now, if we're doing this as a macro, your death visor state is going to be kind of like the pattern portion of your macro. The second thing you need is the semantics. This is kind of like your macro template. In the semantics or your elaborator, you have access to the macro itself through this, this keyword. But you also have typos that should say count. You have access to count here on line four. The final part, and this is what makes interactive syntax interesting, is the render method. Now, if you were to go back to the macro analogy, this is kind of like telling the IDE what font it should display uses of your macro in. Okay? This, uh, this takes any arbitrary HTML uh, format. This is a closure script representation of HTML uh, button. But what's really cool is it, it actually can use any existing JavaScript library. Uh, so this is actually a React version of the bootstrap button that you saw. There are two interesting pieces here. Count. This at here is an unbox. But if you want to change the state, you do it from within the render method in this on-click callback. But once you're in the elaborator, right, uh, once you're in the elaborator, you, you don't want to change your state, right? Because, I, I mean... You don't want to or you cannot. You cannot. It does not make sense. It would be like trying to change your macro's pattern as your macro expanding. What you can do, if you want that, is create a macro that defines a new type of macro. Likewise here, you can create an interactive syntax extension that defines a new type of interactive syntax extension. Uh, so you might want to see this if you create like a form builder. So if we pull up our IDE again, this is the full uh, source code for the example we saw earlier. All right. Um, again, we can still click on this. Uh, and we're getting React Bootstrap from this button here. But you can actually install any other dependency through the, this dependencies manager. Uh, you know, plus all the other standard IDE functions you may want. Uh, I'm going to take a second here to say, are there any questions on this? Okay. So how does this thing work? Well, the first part is allied, and this, this is probably the most pedestrian part of the architecture. This is just a standard text editor paired with a in-memory file system. But what's kind of cool is we then connect this to ClojureScript, which has been bootstrapped to run in the browser. But we've also paired it with this uh, interactive syntax extension preprocessor. Okay? So if we go back to the IDE, and we completely turn off if we completely turn off visual editing we will see code like this 
right? Uh, this contains two pieces. The first, on line 10 here, is just a tag saying, hey, this is a piece of visual syntax. Then on 12 and 13 is the actual visual syntax. Uh, the whole thing was on one line because it was so small. Uh, but bigger synt interactive syntax extensions do uh, span multiple lines, uh, which we, we could see if we were to turn this back on now. Uh, what do you have to do to like instantiate the usage of the of this? That is a great question. Uh, let me show you. You're looking for options? Yes, I was. <laughs> so if you want to add a new interactive syntax extension, you click on insert here. Then you can fill it out with a name. So in this case, counter. And we can open it here. Um, could you also just type out the code from there and it turns into the counter? You absolutely can if you would want want to do that. If you don't want to type all of that code out, I don't want to make it. So you can say editor, counter, and then, well, yeah. There you go. So. Right, this is in a slideshow. Sorry, I'm used to using this text editor not within a slideshow. <laughs> okay. So, um, the uh, def visor, however, is a hook, right? That it, it runs in the background, which hooks back into this uh, framework that the text editor is using. This means that it does have to constantly run part of your program in the background. But, like, this is okay. And for example, earlier today we saw Jack's talk, right, which does that. Additionally, if you have Dr. Racket set up to do uh, highlighting syntax errors, right, it has to expand the macros first for that. So as long as you have a sandbox in place to prevent macros from doing anything particularly bad, that's fine. Uh, but uh, I should mention, we do have to, um, we do want the, pro the, the, the text to run in the background, and web browsers are inherently single-threaded. Uh, so we use Stopify which essentially CPSs, or control passing styles, code uh, to make it sort of a cooperative, preemptive, multi-thread. So, I like Racket. And we're at RacketCon. So, let's do something a little, you know, racking. <laughs> We can actually take this architecture from earlier, but split up the IDE and language components even further and create a, a specifically like dedicated protocol that can cross languages where the backend language server gives uh, sends back like source locations for what should be interactive syntax extensions. A colleague of mine, Cameron Moy, who is amazing and slightly insane, <laughs> decided to take PLT Redux, a programming language in Racket made for engineering operational semantics, and create a visual lambda calculus out of them. Cameron is actually here in the audience. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, so this includes everything from the language itself, which is, in this case, the simply typed lambda calculus, the type forms, and also a reduction relation. 
But what's also kind of cool is because these semantics are written out visually, that inherently means programs in this language are also visual, right? You write down math, um, not ASCII art, to run a program in these semantics. So for context, I tried my best to make something that looked approximately the same in textual Redux, and it's kind of there, but not as much. It's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can you go back for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> what? Are those comments? No. End? So these, this is a racket, uh, a, a racket, that is a racket comment for a single S expression. This IDE here, which is not a lie, it's just the um, generic code block, doesn't understand this because all it has is scheme mode. And so it thinks these are comments, but they're in fact the rest of the S expression. So just the colon is commented out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The colon is a comment because I was really trying to make this look as good as possible, and typing rules have colons in them. This does look approximately what you might write in I, I mean, I don't usually put dots in my my rules, Paul. That's fair. Well, it's a general shape, not necessarily. All right. So this can do a lot more than well. I mean, you you started to see this with the semantics, right? But this can put anything that you could put in a web page right into your code. So we can actually make that tree example. How you could make a weather a, a, a piece of interactive syntax that reached out to a network, checked the local weather, and put that in whatever your program was. How does that work with sandbox? It doesn't. You have to turn off a sandbox to do that. <laughs> but what's more interesting, um, but what's useful for it. <laughs> Imagine writing a paper and you wanted something to grab the date. That's where you might use that sort of thing. So, this is still new, uh, but if you're interested in getting involved, the first place you can go to is the trial L-I-D-E and Visor is Visor.pl, where the IDE you've seen in this slideshow is use directly. I also started a blog with several tutorials on how to create new types of extensions uh, at blog.visor.pl. I also have already put together a catalog of quite a few uh, dependencies from NPM uh, at depths.visor.pl and the sources at source.visor.pl. Um, where do we go from here? Well, there's lots of different directions. The most obvious one is a generalized visual syntax. So, right now we just have the programs being visual, but it makes sense to, to have visual syntax right in your REPL. Or maybe you wanted to have a um, uh, uh, have visual syntax right in other development tools, like a debugger. Alternatively, fairly recently, as of the past few years, web browsers have started being able to run 3D uh, pieces of, um, well, 3D graphics. So it might make sense to try to make a three-dimensional CAD tool out of interactive syntax, where you imagine, say, something like Racket's pick library, where you can describe geometric shapes and compose them together uh, with things like unions and intersections. But remember, this is not just visual syntax, it's visual and interactive syntax. And 
That interactive bit is just as interesting even if there was no visual component. So, for example, you may want a visual macro stepper. Uh, alternatively, we may want, if we were to bring this to Racket, right, we may want to create a dedicated um, explicit edit time phase like we have syntax phases, uh, but we may want other types of phasing as well, like maybe a debugging phase or a documentation phase. Uh, right now we do have kind of an ad hoc documentation phase, but maybe you want to have uh, a document phase that's just for debugging, so a debugging documentation phase. So. There are plenty of places that you can get involved, uh, and there's actually quite a bit of research still being done in this area. Um, I am always looking for people who want to actually, uh, if you want to just learn more about this, or if you write any cool interactive syntax extensions, that is awesome. Uh, and if you're interested in contributing to a lie, uh, trying to turn this into an IDE that we can use for Racket as well as ClojureScript. Uh, using Racket script, I'm working with Stephen Chang uh, and Kyle Clapper uh, to, to, to bring this to Racket script. Uh, that is all I have. Uh, and it looks like we are fine. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Leif. We can right. uh, take some questions. Right. Question. Um, so you uh, said you that you used the DOM in this, right? The like DOM and HTML rendering. That obviously would probably be not that difficult to integrate in an ID like VS Code, which is uh, the, you know HTML based. Uh, how do you deal with that in something like Doctor Racket, which I assume does not already have like a web rendering engine in the DOM? You can either edit it textually or. Honestly, what I'm doing is bringing the DOM into Dr. Racket. Uh, speaking of which, uh, okay, yeah, no, I'm bringing Chrome Embedded Framework into Dr. Racket as a SNP. I'm so sorry, everyone, in advance. <laughs> How does it hold up for if you have to find a widget and then you edit its definition as you have instances of it later on in the code? Oh, that's fine. In fact, I mean, you see this right here, where uh, where where we have the actual widget combined with the code, and maybe we want to change this so that instead of saying the count, it says, "Hey Milo." <laughs> One thing I'm curious about, the benefits of this when you're reading it, uh, reading code are very self-apparent, but what's it kind of look like to write these objects? Are they kind of clumsy, or does it feel natural? What's the experience? That's like? actually a really great question. They... All right, to be fully honest, I first tried to do this in Racket natively using SNPs as a backend. It was completely unwieldy. You could create new types of interactive syntax extensions, cool. You could read interactive syntax extensions, cool. But trying to write code using those created interactive syntax extensions was painful. This is why I switched to the DOM, because I realized, hey, there's been decades of engineering in this, in this area. And to back this up, uh, my, my old advisor, Matthias, and Cameron and I ran user studies where we actually had users try to write code using these interactive syntax extensions. Uh, and they, the, the feedback was fairly positive about their ability to, to, to use this. Does that answer the question? Cool. I think um, we need to get to the next speaker, but uh, we can continue the conversation. Thanks, Lightly. Cool. Thank you.